Hi, I'm Steve Sexton. Welcome to Hapkido Ultimate Self-Defense Techniques. All right, we're going to move into choking defenses from the rear. Really dangerous. If you wait too long to escape, your history. So you need to be aware of your surroundings. You can see something coming around your neck area with peripheral vision. You don't sit there and allow them to clamp it on. Break it right away. Break it right away. Watch closely. We'll move through this slowly. Go ahead. As I see it coming, I block it first, stepping back with my right foot. Step under this arm. Arm bar down. Broken. All right, now let's watch this again in detail. I'll slow it down for you, point out the finer points. Choke comes around. As it's coming around, you're seeing it with peripheral vision. You should act right away. If he were to get this on you, it could be too late. They're hard to get out of, especially when you're losing oxygen. So you want to break it right away. So as this comes around, step back and break it. Block it so he doesn't have a hold of you. Now you're going under the arm. Okay, now grabbing this one, stepping back and applying pressure just above the elbow again into an arm bar. This pressure is going to go to a center point right between my legs. He's going to go at a 45 degree angle. Down he goes. Now, the option here, here again, is to use the knee on the elbow and break the arm. If there's still resistance on his end and he's not done fighting, finish it however you like. But he's still got a broken arm. All right, let's go over it again in detail now. As it comes, you see it with peripheral vision. Go, step back and block it. Grab the wrist. Step under the arm and back. Pull this one to your belt. Close. If it's far away, he's got room to yank you around. You need to keep him tight. At this point, arm bar goes just above the elbow, applying pressure to a center point right between your legs, like this. Once he's down, the option is to break his arm, finish it any way you'd like, kicking, punching. The finishing blow is up to you. All right, don't forget, this knee can be used as leverage. It'll keep him down. Even though his arm's broken, if it's not here, he can start getting up again. You don't want that. You want to keep him there. Tight, broken. Then the option, once the arm is broken, back off, finish it however you like. All right, we're going to continue with the rear choking attacks. Here's another relatively easy one. Remember now, it's important that you see that arm with peripheral vision coming around. Stop it before he's got a good hold, because then you're going to have a lot more trouble getting out of it. As the arm comes around, step forward and block it. At this point, grab the fingers. Notice how my finger here is open? I'm going to turn his hand upside down and apply pressure up. This will put him on his toes and I can do anything I want. If I wanted to, I could go like this and throw him. Here he goes. All right, now watch. Follow along with me. I'll try and explain detail by detail. As the arm comes around, peripheral vision sees it. You block. Stepping forward. With this hand now, grab his fingers. With this finger, we call it the key finger. Open. Grab with every other finger except the index finger. Step away from him now so he can't grab you. Turn this hand upside down. These fingers, this finger is just below this row of knuckles, right across here. See? Turn the hand upside down. Now I'm going to rotate my finger towards myself. That puts him up on his toes. At this point, break. There's nowhere to go but up, and he can't go up, so this is going to break. All right, now watch again. We'll go through it again. Details, watch carefully. 
As the arms come around, step forward and block. With your right hand, grab those fingers. Step away from him now and apply pressure up. If he's not on his toes and able to fight back, look, relax. He can kick me. I don't want that. I want him in trouble, hurting. Now, whatever you want to do, you can do. Kick, punch, whatever. Go. All right, earlier in the previous techniques around the neck, choking techniques, I've showed you that it's best to use peripheral vision and break it before he even has a hold of it. However, times happen, things happen. If he gets a good hold on you, very dangerous. You've got to keep your chin down. Put your arm around my neck. You don't want to be like this. You want to keep the chin down. You also want to have your hand here to pull away. Keep the pressure off, okay? This is really important. And don't stay, stay here too long fighting and wrestling with him. Something has to be done right away. Once you've got a good grip of his arm and it's not choking you like this, this is really important. Then you can move your head back. Hit him in the head with the back of your head. Okay? At this point, you can come out. See how I have his wrist? Bring his elbow down to my chest. Wrist broke. I can just walk him out the door, wherever I want to go. All right, let's look at this again. Take it piece by piece. As it comes around, let's say he's got a good hold on you this time. First thing, keep that away. Keep your chin down once he's got the arm around. Once you've got the hand here, you're free to raise your head a little bit. So right away, don't wait too long. Use your head and butt him in the head. Come under, push this arm forward. That'll get your head out from underneath. Bring the hand up. Breaking the wrist, pain creates an awful lot of non-resistance on his part. The harder you push, broken, he will go anywhere. Over here, over here. All right, the next technique is going to be a bear hug from behind under your arms, around the waist. Grab me. Once grabbed like this, grab the elbow, this part of your hand, on this row of his knuckles. Push this up towards his elbow, breaking his wrist. That causes him to let go. Then you step out at this point. With this hand, you're going to push down a little bit like an arm bar. Once the arm is at 45 degrees, all that need to be done is this hand push straight down and he'll go down. And you've got him pinned. You can keep him here, you can break, you can kick, punch, finishing blow is up to you. All right, here we go again. We're going to watch this again. We'll take it slow, pay close attention to detail. Remember, as this comes around you, Right away you have to react. Keep your head, don't panic, because, but you need to react fast. What if he's gonna pick you up and slam you down? You need to do it right away, don't wait. Soon as it's grabbed, grab the elbow, break that wrist, broken. Now he's gotta let go, he's in a lot of pain. You step out of here now, get away from him. I push down slightly with this hand, bringing his arm to a 45 degree angle. Now, with this one, I push straight down, pinning him like this. 
I can keep him anywhere. It only really only takes one hand. It doesn't really matter. He's not going anywhere. This is broken. You can finish any way you want. All right, we're going to take this at a moderate speed this time. Watch closely. Pay attention to detail. I'll walk you through it. Grab. Break. Step out. 45 degree angle. Push. Pinned. Nothing left to do but finish it however you like. All right, we're going to do another under the arm bear hug attack from the rear. This time, his fingers will be interlaced like this as he grabs. I'll show you how to get out of this one. With the knuckles here, both hands, same time. You want to hit the back of his hand right here. Nothing but bone here. When you hit bone and bone, hurts bad. Most of the pressure points in your body are in your hands and your feet. This hurts really bad. Strike. This loosens him up. Grab like this and twist. Pull him apart. Now I can escape. Step out. Back. I've got a hold of him. It's very important that the little finger be straight up. Not like this, not too far. Straight up and down. This thumb goes under his thumb. These fingers on the wrist. I'm pushing up with the thumb, down with the fingers. I could actually be doing it with one hand. Here, here. Now as I apply pressure, I slightly push. This puts him down. Once down and the wrist is broken, you need to finish it. All right, let's go over this one again. Pay close attention to detail. I'll explain it again as we go through it. Go ahead, grab. Strike to the back of the hand. Hurts, this loosens him up. Grab like this. Twist and pull the hands apart. Step out with your left. Step back with your right. Little finger is on top. Thumb under. Fingers on top of the wrist. I'm going to be bending his wrist back this way. Same time I'm going to push. Down he goes. Finished. All right, this time at a moderate speed. Remember, as soon as he grabs, you have to react quickly before he picks you up or you're getting a lot of trouble. Go ahead and grab. Once grabbed, strike. Pull it apart. Step back. Apply pressure down. Strike. All right, this time we're going to go into grabbing techniques around the arms from behind. There is absolutely no limitations on where to be grabbed how, on the body. There's a way out in every direction, every direction. This particular one is pretty easy. Watch close. Remember, as soon as you're grabbed, you need to react. If you can break it before he gets a hold of it, even better. But let's say he's got you. You need to react now before he lifts you up and then you're limited in the things that you can do. But at this point, let's say it's right away. Step to the left and drop, raising your arms. Grab his wrist, strike to the midsection with your elbow. Now I'm going to take this hand, put it around behind him, and push forward. And with this leg, I'm going to kick this leg out from underneath him, while at the same time I'm pulling with this hand. This is going to get his momentum going that way, and his leg is going to go out from underneath him. Watch. All right, let's go over it again. Pay close attention to detail. I'll take it through you again. Watch closely. Grab, step, drop, raise your arms, grab his wrist. Now, this is important to loosen him up. At this point, you've got to shift your weight over a little bit. 
with this elbow, strike to the midsection. Now bring the arm around behind him, pull, push, kick. All right, let's take it at a moderate speed now. Grab, drop, strike, hook, pull, kick. All right, right now I'm going to show you some escapes from a headlock position. There's several of them, relatively easy, involving pain. This is what makes them let go and balance. Since I'm not going to be able to talk too well with his arm around my mouth, I'm going to try and explain it to you before he does this. Now, as he puts his hand around my head and my neck, he's got me like this. I'm going to reach up behind him with my fingers here and push straight down on this trapezius muscle right here straight into it. Not this way, not any other way, straight down with these two fingers. There's a pressure point in here that really weakens the legs when you do this. Push down. As the legs are weakened, you're going to reach down, grab the behind his leg over here. I'm going to step back, raise this leg, pull down on this. He's going to fall onto his side, and then you finish however you'd like. Let me demonstrate. <clears throat> All right, let's go over it again, slowly. I'll explain all the details again. Follow along with me. As he grabs my head, these two fingers up behind him on this trapezius muscle here, push straight down, that weakens the legs. Grab underneath his knee, over here. With your left foot, you're gonna step back, pulling down and raising. This'll turn him, he'll lose his balance and be in pain. He'll fall right in front of you Finishing blow is up to you. Let's go over it. Okay, trapezius muscle, back of the leg. Pull down, pull up. Down he goes. All right, this time we're gonna try it at a moderate speed. Follow along, watch closely. All right, this time we're going to go into frontal bear hugs under the arms. This one is pretty simple to do. I've used this one for real. It really works, and it doesn't matter how big the person is. The neck muscles are very weak, and this is what it incorporates. Here again, as soon as you're grabbed, you need to do something right away, because if he gets you off the ground before you do anything, you're going to have a worse time of it. It's easy to slam you. So the way this works is once he grabs, okay, grab the back of his hair, his chin, twist and pull down. Like I said, the neck is very weak and then just step back and down he'll go. Finish. All right, here we go again. Watch closely. Remember, as soon as you're grabbed, do something right away. You can't wait until he picks you up. Also remember, this involves the neck. Neck is probably the weakest muscle you have in your body turns really easy and wherever that neck goes that's where your body is going to go so it doesn't take much and if you practice this with somebody please apply the pressure slowly stronger 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 until the person is forced down it's the speed that will break if you do it fast you're going to break somebody's neck you don't want to do that when you're practicing with somebody so here we go again okay grab right away grab the hair and the chin pull back on the hair twist the chin you're going like this. Step away, twist tight, tight. Remember, the harder you go, the easier he's going to go. 
You just don't want to do it too fast when you're practicing. Finishing blow, and the technique is over. Pretty simple, but really easy and effective. All right, this time at a moderate speed, different angle. Watch closely again. I'll take it step by step. Very simple, two steps. Remember, safety first, unless you're doing it for real. Don't do it too hard. Grab, twist, step back, down, strike. All right, this time we're going to go into a bear hug around the arms from the front, so your arms are like this. Now, before I get to this, it'll be kind of hidden, so I want to explain this. You're going to use your fingertips like this to push straight in where the legs meet the groin area, like this. What that does, once he grabs you, is create some space between you and your opponent, puts him a little off balance, because he'll be leaning forward like this now. At that point in time, there's a lot of things you can do, but this is what I'm going to teach you to do. Watch. Okay. Remember what I said now. Push. Look how he's bent over. I'm going to grab him on the shoulder. I'm going to step backwards and kick this leg out. Down he goes. All right, let's go over this again. Remember now. I don't know if you can see it because everything in the beginning is kind of close, but what I'm doing is I'm pushing with my fingertips right where the groin meets the legs, right in here, right there. Push. This will bend him over, hook him around the shoulder, step back, kick the leg out, and push. Watch again closely. Push. Creates the space. Hook him. Step back, kick, and push. All right, now we're going to go for a moderate speed. Watch closely. Same things, a little bit faster. Grab, push, hook, step, kick. All right, another common type of a hold is what they call a full Nelson, where somebody gets you under the arms and behind the neck. Here again, you're best off breaking the hold as soon as possible, before he gets a good grip. If he does, and this guy is exceptionally strong, you're going to have an awfully hard time. So it's always best to try and break it beforehand. Okay, this is the way it's going to go. Up and under. At this point, I'm going to drop a little bit at the same time, I'm going to pull my elbows down and apart, like this, separating his hands. Now he doesn't have a hold of me anymore. I'm going to move his hands out of the way. I'm going to turn and step to his side. Over here, with this arm, I'm going to hit him in the face with this forearm, like this, and step all the way through. All right, watch again. I'll explain it all over again, all right? Grabs behind the neck. Drop. Pull the arms down. Move them apart. This foot steps to, his to your left, to the side of him, over here. At the same time, with this arm, I'm going to smack him right across the face or the neck, wherever you'd like to hit. But to add a lot of strength and power to this blow, step through it, like this and strike. All right, watch again. Take you through it step by step. Drop. 
pull the arms down like this. That breaks the grip behind your neck. I'm going to move his hands to the side and step over here to the side of him. He's going to get hit with the forearm, this bone right here. Practice. Remember what I said. When you do it, don't do it too fast. Hit not too hard. Speed is what hurts somebody. Step all the way through with this leg past him to gain power. All right, we're going to move into defenses against guns and knives. Guns, we're, we're going to start off with a knife. But guns and knives are nothing to fool around with. Both can kill you. I've been cut. It's not a, it's not a nice thing. And depending on where you get cut, could be deadly. So safety is really important. Now, when somebody has a weapon, any kind of weapon really, Distance is important. You need to be just over that line of safety. So any type of movement you can see coming and you can react to it. You don't want to be close enough arguing with somebody with a weapon that they can just stab you right away and it, it's over with. You've got very little time to react then. You need that distance. And then once that distance is closed by him or yourself, reaction is definitely needed. If you're close enough for him to stab you, you need to do something or get out of there, one of the two. All right, now let's bring this out in our first technique. In this particular situation, I'm just over the line. He'd have to move quite a bit that I could see coming before anything happens. Now this particular technique I'm going to show you is basically disarming. Once he doesn't have a knife anymore, now you've got a fight. Well, things to do in a fight I've showed you in previous techniques. Right now we're just going to teach you how to disarm the person. Now when you close your fist and you've got a hold of something, when your wrist is bent, the tendons in your back of your hand that control your fingers do not allow you to hold on to anything. Your fingers tend to open. So this is what we're going to do. He's standing here with a knife like this. When, I, when he gets a little bit too close, I make my move. And the way it comes down is this hand is going to hit his wrist. This hand is going to hit the back of his hand. At the same time, what this does is it bends his wrist. See how he loses his grip on the knife? So, watch it. Step. Knife is gone. Now we can fight. All right, let's look at it again. Now remember, distance in the beginning is really, really important. You don't want to be too close to anybody with a weapon who can possibly hurt you. If it, in, in fact, if at all, you can leave, do it. You know, why fight somebody when you run the risk of getting hurt? It's not, you know, if you don't have to do it, don't do it. Now, let's go over this again, and slowly this time, and watch close now. I'm safe at this distance, pretty safe at this distance. Now, he makes any kind of forward motion. Let's say my back is against a wall or something, and I can't move back. As soon as he has crossed that line, something needs to be done, or you're going to get hurt. So, a little bit of forward motion on his part, no more waiting, it has to be done. Then follow through with something else. The finishing blow is up to you, but now at least you're in a regular fight. And you don't have no worries about getting hurt with a knife or a gun. Alright, I'm going to take you through this again. Let's take a look at it slowly. Let's look at how it works. Start off farther away, and what I might suggest, whether the person has any kind of weapon, I don't care what kind of weapon it is, one of the first things you should do is put your hands up like there is no resistance on your part. That will lull him into a false sense of security like you're not going to fight back. When in all reality, your hands are cocked and ready to go instead of down here because you'd have to bring him up here to do this anyway. You've just eliminated a step and made him feel more secure. So, let's watch it slowly. A little bit of inward motion. Slapped. 
it's done, finish, however it is you want to finish, and now you're in a street fight again. All right, the next knife technique is going to be close to the body. Something that could commonly happen if you're out on the street and somebody wants to rob you, for instance. They're not going to take a knife from way back here and threaten you with it. They're going to come up unassuming and then stick it on you and say, give me your money, something like that. So in this instance, let me show you what to do. Same thing holds true. First thing you do is act like you're not going to resist. Put your hands up. Here again, you're cocked and ready for action by putting your hands up, and it lulls him into a false sense of security. Slowly, watch, it's at my stomach. He wants my wallet. First thing that happens is my hands go up, no resistance. At this point, I'm going to block down on his wrists like this with my hands. See, same time, stepping back. And now with my fingers, I'm going to grab down. So I've got a hold of his hand. He can't open his hand. The knife is stuck in his hand. So, block down, grab. Step through, under, turn, stick. Fight's over. All right, now, let's go through this again slowly, step by step. Watch every detail. I'll try and explain everything and not miss anything. Now, he's got this up against me. Give me your money. No resistance. Very important that you block like this and not like this. If you block like this, his hand can go through and stick you. You don't want that. This way, it's not going to go through. Also, when you block, you don't block this way. You block down, crossing your thumb, so you block like this. As you do block, in the event that he decides to lunge and stick you, you want to be stepping back away from that, blocking and grabbing. Grabbing tight so he can't open his hand. You kind of grab down, grab a hold of his fingers like this. Now, step under his arm, step back, bend this wrist, and then stick. All right, let's look at the block from this angle. This is the most important thing. If you blow this, the rest of the technique is null and void. I mean, you can't do it. First, non-resistance. Next, right from the chest, step back. When you step back, step off to the right so you've got distance between your feet. Balance. Don't step straight back because then you're like on a tightrope. See, no good. Back and off to the right. Hands come down and the thumbs cross, like this. You don't want to grab like this. He could come through easy, break through those hands and stick you. Now, as you block, you're coming down like this, grab downward. And make sure you're leaning forward a little bit. If you're standing too tall, that knife can be awfully close. You don't want too small a, you know, error, margin for error here. You want to, you want, distance between you and him. So, again, non-resistance to the chest. Step back and off to the right. Comes straight down, thumbs crossing. Grab and then go through under his arm and stab. All right, a moderate speed at this angle. Watch closely. Knife is pulled, non-resistance. Step back and block. Grab those hands. Step under. Bend the wrist. Stab.
All right, now we're going to go into a different angle of a knife defense. This time he's going to come at me overhanded like this with a lot of forward momentum. Here again, very important, non-resistance. You don't want to fight. At least that's what you're leading him to believe. Okay, let's watch that slow motion right now. Non-resistance. He comes at me slowly. First thing you want to do is step to the side so the knife misses. Help it along with your hand pushing down. Could possibly stab his leg. At this point, with this bone, what you want to do is step through behind him with your right leg, hitting him in the throat. Down he goes. All right, watch without my assistant here at this angle straight on. He's coming down overhand, non resistance. First thing you want to do is get out of the path of the knife. You step around it. Help block it downward. Once that arm is out of the way, remember this man's trying to kill you, so don't be nice. The throat 